The Rocket League World Championship started this week in Dallas, and winning $600,000 and the World Championship would of course be great, but this tournament will host a far more important contest, as Endpoint and BDS have the potential to break the record for the longest loss streak at RLCS lands, with Team Power currently holding it with 12 straight losses. Finally BDS can actually win something in front of the crowd. My name is Anton and you're watching This Week on Rocket League. This is of course the series where we take a look at all the crazy and stupid things that this game has had to offer during the past 7 days. And believe me, this game never fails to deliver. What did I just watch? So let's check out what's been happening this week. Rocket League YouTuber and coach Bookluk was under fire this week after offering to pay designers to make him new Twitch graphics by shoutouts and exposure instead of, I don't know, you know, money for example. Apparently 200,000 subscribers isn't enough to get 20 bucks to pay your graphic designers. Things then didn't drastically improve when he posted a job announcement for a virtual assistant role on Twitter where he required the applicants to quit all side hustles if they got selected. A PR manager is what you really need. He made an apology video later to explain the situation. He admitted the Twitch graphics design incident was a mistake. He didn't really think it through and he will be paying the designer now. Mistakes happen and at least he knows now that maybe people like to get paid for their work. He then said he required the applicants to quit their other hustles to prevent children from entering. I mean, come to think of it, maybe this isn't the best way to do it. And you know what? You don't even need to pay me exposure for this, but you go to the application and then you write you must be over 18 years old. Obviously, I'm just joking around and I'm summarizing a lot. He made a couple mistakes, which is just normal to be honest. At the end of the day, he didn't do anything egregious. He isn't scamming anyone and he does pay all his employees. He seems like a good guy. Dumb mistakes happen to everyone from time to time. If you're interested, which you probably aren't, you just want to see how many Harry Maguire jokes I can make in a video. There is a link to the full apology video in the description. But speaking of Harry Maguire, let's see what his favorite esports team that he's probably already forgotten about has been doing this week. You probably haven't heard that the Ford Plus Freestyle Invitational was played this past week before the World Championships and I said haven't heard because just like gamers said, it wasn't promoted almost at all. If the Rocket League esports Twitter admin wasn't allowed to have any other side hustles, Rocket League would be a tier 1 esport. A lot of people were also disappointed that none of the judges in the tournament were actual freestylers, which led to some very interesting rankings. For a lot of freestylers, this was a moment they have grinded for years to get to, so you would expect a lot more from Psyonix here. But in the end, Faith and TX qualified for the finals that will be played at the Dickies Arena Sunday August 14th during the World Championship with 70 grand on the line. And that's more advertising for the event than Psyonix will ever do. But moving on to the World Championship that started this week in Dallas. Let's have a quick look at what's happened so far. I would just like to apologize. Semper is a great Rocket League team. Harry Maguire is the greatest player at Man United. He's definitely worth 5 million pounds more than Virgil van Dijk. Just before the tournament started, we got some very sad news as Gaming Gladiators player Abscrecy announced that he couldn't attend due to not getting a visa. It really sucks that he left out of Gamers A to sort out the visa issues, yet he still couldn't go. Not to mention the team has had to play the tournament without one of their starters. Over in the Middle East, 0-1 Esports flight was delayed, which cost them the out on crucial practice and jet lag recovery time. Qualifying for Worlds was the easy part. The real challenge is getting in the country. A day before the event started, the Tokyo Verdi team decided to not play under the org and instead play as the Senbei Strikers. We're not sure why they decided to do this, but if you guys change your name to Sandblock Gaming, I will give you credit plus a shout out. As mentioned before, BDS and Endpoint have a chance at making history and beating the record for the most ROCS LAN games lost in a row next week. Tokyo Verde are of course out of the contention, as the roster isn't representing them, but all I know is, if BDS manages to achieve this feat, the whole nation of France would go nuts. But moving on to other esports news, and we have news from Semper, who are struggling after a loss of 1.46 million dollars last year. They will exit every game besides Rocket League to reduce costs, but it's very unlikely that they will stay in this game for long either. I mean, I know I like to clown on them, but this is really sad to see, especially after seeing how passionate Harry Maguire is about this org. 
Sorry, I just had to do one more before it's too late. I want to see them go far in this tournament because we probably won't see them ever again. German RLCS veteran Freaky announced his retirement from competitive play this week on Twitter and he will be moving onward as a coach or manager. So best of luck to him in the future. Solary have parted ways with their team of Tho, Oli and Mike Boy. Oli and Tho are currently trying out other options, but the team is still in good terms. So they might still possibly team up together in the future. SK Gaming are also leaving Rocket League as they only qualified for a single regional this season and even then finished in the shared last place. And last but not least, Misfits are parting ways with their team as well. After coming 10th in EU this season, but even though half of the EU esports orgs are leaving the game, there will always be one thing that never changes. And that's your teammates being the worst players to ever touch a controller. Yeah, I did it! No, you didn't. That was the clutchest save anyone has ever seen. That was the wrong goal, you moron. I'm like Manuel Neuer in his prime. Watching the pros play is pretty entertaining. However, nothing is more entertaining than ranked diamond gameplay. Now this was actually quite high level. As a Diamond 2 myself, I'd say this is about Diamond 3. As we all know, Rocket League matchmaking is flawless, which Reddit user Neo got to experience this week in this lobby with 31 players. What game mode is this? Team Deathmatch? But now it's the time of the week again, where you guys send me your clips and I give you credit plus a shout out. It's time for Clip of the Week. Each week you guys submit your clips on the Anton the Kicker Discord. The top 5 are then voted on by the members and have a chance at winning 500 credits. So if you want to submit your own clips or influence who makes the top 5 for one of these videos, you can do so on my Discord server, link in the description. But before we reveal the top 5, let's look at some honorable mentions. Ducky posted probably the best clip we've seen so far. You should have gone up to him and asked if he thinks that loaning Archie to Endpoint was the right move now that they were able to build a full French roster. Nico got this Pentacanto reset in Rumble this week. Donkey got this nasty fake on his friend while waiting for a tournament to start. <laughs> Sneaky Narna destroyed his opponent with this double flip reset in a 1v1. Coach Curtis got this Tetra reset in training. Shoti sent his opponents flying in this 2v2 match. And Explosion invented this booty flick in a 1v1. But now it's time to reveal the top 5. Like mentioned before, these were voted by the Discord members. RiazDF scored this insane across the field corner rebound psycho with 0 seconds left. Latency scored this silly musty double tap off the corner. And next up is the return of the COD, as Orange COD scored this ceiling double tap in Heatseeker. Ronin won the contest last week, and this week he's back again with this ground pinch psycho in a 1v1. And last but not least, we have Aaron, who scored this Coxer pinch with 0 seconds left to take the win in a 2v2 match. And that's the top 5. As always, there will be a YouTube poll in the channel. The person with the most votes after 24 hours wins 500 credits. Ah! Hello. <laughs> that's it for the video, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, welcome back to the outro where I look at countries and... I still don't know how to explain it. Last time in my background I had a, a glass of water. And this time I have a new blender. So I hope you enjoyed that. And last time I also asked you to suggest me some countries to look at. Now we're gonna look at your comments and pick one of your guys' suggestions. So we have... Um... I can't see a single one. I swear people suggested countries. Where are they at? Okay, finally I found one. Check out Bulgaria. Uh, all right, all right, here we are for the Wikipedia page for the cities in Bulgaria. So let's have a look. Oh wait, that, no, that's 1946. Uh, the best we have is 2011, so I guess. 
Let's go with that. And if we scroll down here, I just realized I forgot to check how many subscribers I have. All right, 21.2K. So that would be Atos in 2011. But that's it for this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, become a member. It's very cheap. It's very nice. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. I'll see you guys later. Bye.